So I want to start looking at limits by first of all um, discussing what a limit is and then also looking at notation and then you've got your calculators we'll look at evaluating limits at a point okay but first of all let's start by talking about the definition of a limit and we'll look at one that's um, not quite as technical as the one that you'd learn in college um, but still does the job I think pretty well All right if a function f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a unique number L as x approaches c from either side the limit of f of x as x approaches c is L okay and then notice the notation here please this is written as we abbreviate limit LIM Underneath it, you have x with an arrow and then a c, x approaching c, of f of x equals l. And I'm actually going to use a piecewise function to illustrate this, um, just to, so we can see this work once, okay? We have this piecewise function, f of x is defined as x squared minus 4 for all the values of x less than or equal to 2. Alright, so you see x squared minus 4 would be this parabola, but f of x is just the part up to where x equals 2 right here. Okay. Then f of x is defined as 1 half x minus 1 for all the values of x greater than 2. Okay. And we're trying to find the limit as x approaches 2 of this function f of x. So you notice the c in this case is 2, right? <laughs> L is the value that we're approaching. Now, a key word here is this word approaches, okay? Notice it's approaching. One thing that is sometimes hard for students to kind of accept in their minds is the fact that the function does not necessarily have to equal this value L or even be defined at the value C, okay? It could be undefined at C. But we're looking at it as the function approaches c, as x approaches c. What does the value of the function approach? All right, so as we look at this piecewise function, if we're coming from this side, you'll notice the function goes like this, and the value goes all the way down to negative 4, and as x gets closer and closer and closer to 2, the value of our function is getting closer and closer and closer to 0. Okay. As we're coming from the right-hand side, as x is getting closer to 2 from the, from the right-hand side, from these larger values, the value of our function is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and it's approaching this value here, this value 0. Okay. So what we would say in this case is that the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is 0. Okay? Now, in this case, it happens to equal f of 2. All right? One of the things we're going to look at tomorrow is determining when can you just plug the number in and when do you have to use other strategies. Okay? For example, if we plugged in f of 2, that would take us in this part of the piecewise function. 2 squared is two, 4 minus 4 is 0. And that's what our limit ended up being. Okay, That's not always going to be the case. And sometimes our function won't even be defined at the value that we're approaching, as we'll see here in later examples. Okay. So, before we learn some rules about limits and we learn um, other, other things about that, I want to look at some examples and actually use a table 
in order to to find limits. Now this is a very simple one. We're finding the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x minus 2. Okay, so we have this line. Here's negative 2. We go up 3 over 1. Here's another point. Okay, and we have this line. Okay, and as x approaches 2, the question is, what is our function? What value is our function approaching? Okay. Now, on this one, it's actually really easy to see. Because we have this continuous line, all right, what is this point? It's 2, Three. 4. four. Okay. One, two. We've got 2, 4. All right. And in this case, the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x minus 2 does equal 4. But let's use our table. I'll bring up the calculator here. Let's use our table and learn how to use how to use our table. Okay. All right. We have this table. We can sketch. We can get the graph of our function. Our function is three x minus two. Okay. And. It is possible to use the actual table feature on your calculator, but what I think is actually easier is just to graph this. Okay, there's our line. And then to use trace. And remember, when you use trace, you can actually type in values. So if I type in 1.9, okay, hit enter, y is 3.7. Okay. Now, notice what we're doing in this table. The values of x are getting closer and closer to 2 on either side, right? So, I start the furthest away is 1.9, okay, below 2. Now I'll do 1.99. That's 3.97, okay? Then I'll come over here and do 1.999, okay? And that's 3.997, okay? Now let's go over the other side of the table, all right? We have 2.1, and that's 4.3, okay? Then we had... 2.01, 4.03, and if you kept going, good, 4.003. So you'll notice here our function is approaching what value from both sides? Four. It's approaching 4 from both sides. So that confirms here our limit equals 4. Okay. Yes. How do you do this on the end? If you on the end spire, if you go to uh, trace number five, mm -hmm. which trace graph trace? trace. Okay. 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 If you just type in numbers and hit enter, it'll give you the point. Okay. Did you get it to work? No. It actually works the same as on the 84. Go to trace. I just didn't know which trace okay. I had to choose. Um, can you trace? You have to grab it first. Okay, so there's your line. And then that's three. It's trace. So hit that. And then you just type it on point two. I don't know. I missed all my... Um, Everything I said, what did you I got wrong. Oh, I predicted Make sure you're no. on the line. R3 on the line itself. R3 on the line. Like, okay. I don't know. Would you predict this number? I don't know. Did you find me one line? No. All right, any questions? On the end spire, uh, if you hit 
what is it, menu, menu and then number five, five is trace, and then you can type in numbers just like on the 84. Okay? All right, so that seems pretty simple. Okay? Seems pretty simple. How do, how do you know which file to choose for C? Or well, C will be given. Okay? Guys, listen, please. C will be given. You'll be asked for the limit as x approaches some value. Okay. So, is it is it just the value of this function at this number? In this case, it is, and that's what we're going to look at tomorrow. When is it just f of two, and when do we have to do other things? Okay. And actually, yeah, this is a good example of one where, okay. Here's a case where if you tried to evaluate it, look at our function. Okay, here's the graph. We have x over the square root of x plus 1 minus 1. Okay, now do be careful plugging this one into your calculator. But if you look at the graph, notice there's going to be a hole right here at the point 0, 2. Okay? So this is one where I was telling you it is possible for our function to not be defined at the value we're trying to approach. But as you look at this, as we approach it from the left-hand side, what's the value of our function approaching? X is approaching 0. Y is approaching 2. And as we approach 0 from the right-hand side, we're also approaching 2. So initially, we were, we're thinking that this limit is going to equal 2. Okay? Let's use our table again to confirm or deny that. Okay? So, we go back to y equals. Again, be very careful plugging in your functions. We want x divided by parentheses square root of x minus 1 close the parentheses for the square root and then oh wait it's x plus 1 sorry and then still in the denominator but outside of the square root we have a minus 1 and then close the parentheses for the denominator and if we sketch, if we graph that, there you have it, just like you see down here. Okay? Bones away, focus. So now we plug in values. Notice we start at 100 away from zero, then we go to a thousandth, then a ten thousandth. All right? So if we trace and we plug in a negative 0 0.01. What's your window set to? Just standard. Okay. The, key, the thing is you actually don't even have to see it or be able to see it very well as long as you can trace it. Is there a reason why you're choosing such like small numbers or is it just do like... Do they give you the x's that you should plug in? or like? Can you in this them? case, they did, but okay. you would want to pick numbers that are getting closer and closer and closer to, your to what you want to approach. Here, notice we're approaching zero on both sides. On both sides. Okay. okay. But would it make a difference if you started at, like, negative two, negative one and a half? You just want to get close to what you want. It, it may not be as conclusive. Oh, okay. So you want yeah. to be Yeah. So why wouldn't you just do, like, point... Oh, you could you could do that too. All right, we just chose to use these six values. So we plug in a negative 0.01, and we get 1.994. What is that? Nine something? Yes. Okay. 0.9949. Okay. So now, now if we go over here and we plug in a 0.001. Point one nine 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 four. Okay. Point 
okay, and so on. All right? And then when we plug in a negative point zero 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 one. Yeah, there's four nines and then the five. One point nine 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 five and so on. Okay? Yes. How did you come up with the two? We came up with the two just from looking at the graph, but that's not good enough. Okay? That's so it's not good enough. Be the place where it's undefined? Well, not necessarily. Okay? This is why we're doing this. Okay? okay? So you can only you just do that instead of that. Yeah, we're gonna use the table. So here's the thing. We made an observation based on the graph. Now we're confirming it mathematically to see if it's right or wrong. Okay? Now, uh, somebody get the 0.01, the 0.001, and someone else get the 0.0001. 2 uh, for this one? Yeah. 2.0049. Okay, what's this one? 2.0004499. And then 2.0004499. Okay, so what value are we approaching? From both sides, we're getting closer and closer to 2, okay? So here's a good case, a good example where you aren't able to actually evaluate it at that function, okay? You can't evaluate it at the function. Um, you have to use some other method, okay? Why wouldn't you just put an asymptote? Well, in this case, there isn't an asymptote yeah, to it's a whole. Oh. Technically, you could cancel it out. Okay. There's oh. a way to, and, and we'll look at that next week. Why is it 2 if the answer would be 0 for x up to 0? Well, the answer is not 0. x is approaching 0. Oh, so... And wait, when wait. x approaches 0, our function or our y value approaches... Two. So when you plug zero into that function, you get two? No, when you plug this into your function, you get, zero. You get zero over the square root of one minus one, which is zero over zero. And we'll talk about that later. It's called an indeterminate form. So why is x with x two? It's f of x is not two we're recognizing that oh, the value is approaching 2. Okay, so okay. f of x is not necessarily like plugging that into the function. Yes, that's just the limit yes. Of it. Yeah, that's the limit. Okay. And again, getting that concept of approaching into your head is really important so here. So could... Is, no. I'm sorry. Here you go. It's okay. Is the approaching number always going to be an integer? It doesn't have to be. Okay. You could have x approaching 2.8. So how do we know, like, could I say that, like, that approaching number is, like, 2.0000, like, 4? What if I, like, like, what makes it 2? Because there's a yeah. whole at 2. Well, here's the oh, thing. Okay, here's the thing. What we're doing, actually, is an approximation of the limit. Okay. We technically cannot say for certain that it is exactly 2. We're going to learn how to say for certain that it's two later. Okay. Okay. I'm just Using the tables like this is an approximation method for limits. Okay. That's all we can do with this at the, at this point. But, the, but it's good to help us see mm -hmm. what's graph, going on. The graph function isn't necessarily the x, the square root of x. Like, I'm just getting confused because if you plug in the x value to the like function, the limit, mm -hmm. but it doesn't, it, that's not. Yeah, it doesn't have to be defined at the, at the spot that you're approaching. Because again, you're approaching it. You're never. Approaching. You don't care right on. And actually, you can have piecewise functions. They're kind of goofy, but you can have piecewise functions where let's say, let's say this piecewise function here, there was actually a hole here, and then, you know, this was just less than. And then when x equaled 2, it equaled 
7. Okay, so you've got this random point that's up here. Here's a case where even though it's a val if you evaluated it at 2, you would get 7. Yeah. The limit as x approaches 2 would still equal 0. Okay. Because that's what the value is approaching, even though technically it equals something different okay. at that point. And we'll okay. see it when we plug in. Yeah, you'll see it. Um, that's not as common, but it, it can happen. All right, try this one. All right, I want to look at a couple that are kind of interesting ones here and make some conclusions, okay? So go ahead, you can work with somebody. We're finding the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value of x over x. And you actually you probably don't even need a calculator. For but, each of those, you would plug the x value. Is there, where is an absolute yeah. value? Yeah, plug, you don't need... You don't need it. Just you know how to do absolute value, right? You don't need to graph this one. Just go ahead and fill out the table. Oh. Oh. For limits? Yeah. They're the foundation of derivatives and integrals, which have huge implications. So, all right, so question What do you get when you plug in negative 0.01? Negative 1. Negative 1. Because it's positive 0 0.01 over negative 0 0.01, so negative 1. What do you get when you plug in negative 0 0.001? Negative 1. Negative 1. What do you get when you plug that in? Negative 1. Negative 1. What do you get when you plug in this? 1. How about this? 1. Okay. So, what value are we approaching as x approaches 0? 0. 0. No. No, you're not approaching 1. What? We can't. We can't find. I think you were right. What? We can't find the one that I see zero. There, we can't find. If you plugged in zero, you're right. That, you'd get zero over zero. We're not approaching anything. Okay, you're right. We're not approaching anything. We're actually, if you were to graph this, if you were to graph this, it would look like this. Okay, here's negative one. Okay, we would have an open point here and a horizontal line to the left. Listen. And then up here, we'd, be a pro we'd have positive one. There would be an open point, and it would be a horizontal line going that way. So as we approach zero, what value, singular, are we approaching? We aren't. Okay, we're actually approaching... Negative 1 from the left, but positive 1 from the right. So here's what we would say. We would say the limit does not exist. Does not exist. Oh my god, this is such a mean girls moment. Oh my god. What? Have, have, okay. have you seen the mean girls? No. There's I don't feel like I'm missing out. Oh, you really are. You're not. There's a moment at the end where like, they're in a math competition, she's and, and she's like staring at a problem, and then she's like, the limit does not exist. <laughs> this is so awesome. I can't believe I'm trying to live this. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, for so long, I was like, what is a limit? Well, now you know. That's so, so simple. They acted like it was some impossible hard question. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, it is impossible because it doesn't exist. Are you recording this class? <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Can you post this video? All right. Please? Yeah, can you post so, this one? Post this one. <laughs> Here's the deal. This actually gives us a good illustration of, of something we need to consider. And we have what's known as a left-hand limit and a right-hand limit. 
okay? A left-hand limit is the limit as x approaches from the left, from values that are less than c, okay? Now, to the left is the negative side of the x-axis, so here's, what, here's the notation. This is notation that you need to be familiar with, okay? If we were doing this problem, we would say that the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, and notice the notation, you put a little negative after the 0, okay? That's the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side, okay? Of our function, what is it approaching from the left side? It's approaching negative 1, okay? It's approaching negative 1. Okay? Now, we also have the right-hand limit. What do you think we're going to do for notation for that one? Plus. Yeah, put a little plus after the 0. So it's the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side or from the right side of the absolute value of x over x, that would equal a positive 1, okay? So, think with me here. We said this limit doesn't exist. Can someone try to come up with a rule, maybe, for when we can tell a limit doesn't exist? When, the when there's an absolute value. No, not necessarily. Oh, yeah. No, not necessarily. When the absolute value, no, okay. When the lines well, are going in When the left direction. hand limit and right hand limit are not equal to each other? There we go. When the left hand limit and the right hand limit are not the same. Okay? We're approaching two different values. Okay? We're approaching two different values from the left and from the right. Okay? Therefore, we can't say that our limit is approaching a certain number. Okay? So we say the limit does not exist. Okay? One other one. Okay? One other one. Let's take a look at this. And you guys don't need your calculator for this either. Because you know your unit circle. Right. <laughs> okay? Here's the limit. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 1 over x. And they set up the table for us pretty nicely, okay? If I take 1 over 2 over pi, what is that? 1 over 2 over pi. 1 over 1. 1 over 2 over pi is pi over 2, right? All right. What's the sign of pi over 2? 1. 1. Got it. Okay. Wow. Think unit circle. I got this. Pi over 2 is right here. So we're at 1. Now, what's 1 over 2 over 3 pi? 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. What's sign of 3 pi over 2? What's, what's sign of 3 pi over 2? 1 over 2. Uh, two root three pi. Zero, right? No. <laughs> three pi over root two. two over two. Here's zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two. So okay, what's sign? One. Negative one. Negative one. Okay. So now let's keep going. If it's four pi over two, five pi over two, so our sign is. One. What's this one going to be? What's this one? What's this one? Negative one. So what is x, what is our function approaching? From one to the negative one to the one. It just keeps bouncing back and forth between negative one and positive one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So is it approaching, is it honing in on one particular value? No. 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 The limit does not exist. So we would say the limit does not exist. Okay? Yeah. Or actually we would say up here. Does not exist. And okay? do we also write, do we have to write like the 
the approaching from the left and approaching from the right? Well, here's the thing. Even approaching from the left, it doesn't exist because it keeps bouncing up and down. Couldn't you find okay. if you started using numbers even closer to zero on both sides? Because the function, oh, oh, the function wouldn't be defined. Yeah. It's not going to be defined at zero. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Get closer and closer, not using these ones and negative ones. Yeah. This actually, though... This actually, though, brings us to a couple of rules. And this is what I want to kind of finish off today with. There are three ways that we can determine that a limit does not exist. And we've looked at two of them. And the third one it is actually kind of a matter of opinion. Because depending on who you have in college or what book you're reading... It'll either be called does not exist or they'll actually give it a value. And I'll talk, we'll talk about that later. Okay? Well, let's look at this. There's three ways to determine that a limit does not exist. First of all, we already mentioned the left and right hand limits are not equal. Okay? And by the way, if it doesn't exist on one side, obviously does not exist is not equal to something else. Okay, so if one of these doesn't exist, you would say that the limit doesn't exist. All right. Um, secondly, there is oscillating behavior between two fixed values as x approaches c. Now notice here, it kept going between 1 and negative 1. So by definition, we say that it is even though we could get closer and closer and figure out what it's kind of approaching in that way, because the overall function is oscillating between, or just going back and forth between 1 and negative 1, we would say the limit does not exist. Okay? That happens with periodic functions. Okay? So you really don't have to worry about that one too much unless you're dealing with trig functions. Okay? Sines and cosines, typically. All so, right. But wouldn't the reason why it's always the same value be because you chose those numbers? Well, yes, but those are still there even if we had chosen other ones. I mean, yes, I know it's, as we approach zero, you know, here's one and negative one. It's going to keep going between those, and yes, there are other things between them, uh -huh. but... Even if I picked these values in here, okay, you still have the case where it's oscillating between 1 and negative 1. Okay. The third case here is that the function or increases or decreases infinitely as x approaches c. And this is the one where, depending on who your instructor is or what book you read, you'll see this one given as the limit doesn't exist, or you may also see a case, oh, not that one, um, that was another one. You'll see a case like this. Um, for example, if I have f of x equals 1 over x squared, okay? If I have 1 over x squared, then um, as I approach zero, it's going to look like this. Okay, so notice as I approach zero, look, on both sides it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we could say that the limit as x approaches zero of 1 over x squared, okay, what is our function approaching? Infinity. Infinity, okay. People, again, depending on who you are working with, they'll say it's either approaching positive infinity or they'll say it does not exist, okay. I will accept either answer, all right. I would accept either answer because both are valid. The people that say it doesn't exist don't like infinity because a limit 
isn't approaching infinity isn't a specific value. Okay? So because it's just getting bigger and bigger, it's not actually approaching a specific number, so they would say it doesn't exist. And I understand what they're saying. It works either way, okay? But it's not going to impact what you have. Here's a case where the left and right hand limit, if we're approaching zero, okay, we're approaching zero from the left hand side. Please be quiet, don't start talking. The left hand limit doesn't exist. The right hand limit, it's approaching zero. So we would exist. say the limit itself does not exist. So anytime you don't have one side approaching, it does not exist, right? That's right. Okay? So if they're not equal or if one doesn't exist. Okay? So when we have like a test. All right. Hang on real quick. I gave you some. Listen. I gave you some to try. Okay. I also gave you a section here where you're using the graph to establish the limit. Okay. Take a look at those and uh, work it through. All right. Bye. Bye.